and yeah, amidst the current circumstances, I do hope everyone is um, safe and well. So um, to start the presentation, my name is Yusuf Resk. I'm a third year medical student at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland in Bahrain. And um, today I'm going to be presenting my paper on the pattern of expression of human placental lactogen across normal lactational and malignant epithelium which is led by um, our lead researcher, doc, Dr. Raja Al Yusuf. Yeah. So um, introduction wise, um, we have realized that recent evidence on the effect of human placental lactogen on breast malignancies has been lacking in the literature. Um, there has been debate in the literature over to what extent HPL contributes to lactation. However, um, recently several papers have established that HPL does indeed play a role in a woman's ability to lactate, but to what extent it has been um, a, a topic of debate. So um, the fact that when we, when we were reviewing the literature and realized that um, several papers have confirmed that HPL does play a role to a certain extent, in a woman's ability to lactate. We continued looking forward uh, um, further and we found this intriguing proposal uh, presented in the literature, which suggested that HPL may actually also play a role in lactation's protective mechanism against breast uh, carcin uh, carcinogenesis. And um, here's where we identify the gap in the literature because one such proposal was um, suggested and we, we looked for further papers in the literature, we noticed that no other papers presented um, any evidence on the expression of human placental lactogen on human lactational epithelium change cells. So um, as far as we are concerned and to our knowledge, we are the first paper to convey the expression of HPL in human lactational change epithelium. And the reason why we believe this is so important is because amidst the uncertainty in the literature, over whether um, HPL could potentially play a role in the protective mechanism against breast uh, carcinogenesis. Then we felt the need and the urge to build up the evidence we have in terms of um, HPL's expression in lactation change epithelium. So um, to elaborate further on the unique value of lactation change epithelium, um, obviously um, these two points are from the pathologist experience who are working with us on the research. Um, and from their experience, they have um, emphasized that coming across lactational change epithelium was not uh, common in routine practice. And in the rare occasion where they did come across um, lactational change epithelium, pathologists did not tend to SNOMED code them, which meant that it, was, it made it more difficult to retrieve such material from the um, routine diagnostic histopathology lab if required. So therefore, when we were able to um, have such material, thanks to uh, Salmonia Medical Complex, which have, have uh, we retrieved those cases from the hospital, these specimens were taken between 2001 and 2007. We appreciated, we really appreciated the unique value of such specimens because it all added up that there is a uh, lack of evidence in the literature, there is a gap in the literature, and now there are proposals suggesting that HPL may play a role in um, the protection against breast carcinomas in lactation. And so we took this opportunity and we decided to lay out a set of results on the expression of HPL across the different levels of um, epithelium differentiation. So from normal to malignant epithelium, but with particular emphasis on lactation change epithelium because of the unique value of lactation change epithelium. And also due to the fact that um, lactation change epithelium were considered the most thermally differentiated um, cells. And so it even, it added more um, incentive to further investigate the uh, protection against the carcinogenesis in lactation theory. So more uh, materials and methods. Um, we performed a retrospective study on archival formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissue blocks, which, as I mentioned, were retrieved from the uh, files of the histopathology department in Family Medical Complex in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Um, 97 cases were included in total, 53 of which were invasive ductal carcinomas, 
21 were lactation change epithelium, and 23 were normal mammary tissue, which were taken from the excisions performed for benign pathology. Um, immunohistochemistry was um, carried out for placenta lactogen antibody uh, vacocytomation. So um, the way the um, immunohistochemistry was carried out, five micrometer, uh, five micrometer sections were cut and they were mounted on um, silane coated slides. They were dried, deparaffinized in xylene and rehydrated in alcohol. Um, endogenous per uh, peroxidase was quenched by 3% hydro hydro hydrogen peroxidase for 10 minutes. And then the slides were incubated overnight at four degrees Celsius with the uh, polyclonal placenta lactogen antibody through the cytomation at a uh, thousand fold dilution. Um, immune reaction was detected and visualized by using the decocytomation LSAB2 system. And the positive cases were determined by um, showing moderate to dark brown cytoplasmic staining pattern in 10% or more of the cells. Um, so um, once we conducted the experiment and we, we, we've had the, um, the comparisons in the major groups we were looking at, which were normal, lactational, and malignant epithelium, we decided to extract further parameters from the malignant pathology report and further analyze the expression of HPL along these uh, clinical parameters. So the parameters exported from the pathology reports included tumor grade, estrogen receptors, uh, progesterone receptors, uh, HER2 expression, and auxiliary lymph node uh, status. So this allowed us to further investigate the expression of HPL among these several groups. Immunohistochemistry for ER and PR were determined by the HISTO score method, and the positivity ranged from 20 out of 300 to 300 out of 300, <laughs> excuse me, and HER2 was determined by uh, scoring the membranous stain as negative if it was zero or one plus, equivocal or positive. And the equivocal uh, group, the cases that showed HER2 equivocal results, were um, excluded from the um, analysis of HPL expression. So then data was analyzed using the SPSS, and uh, we grouped them into categories, as mentioned, and we analyzed for correlations using the Pearson chi square test. So, um, moving on to the results, well, bearing in mind that the level of statistical significance is p-value less than 0 0.05. So in table one, we can see that um, in malignant versus normal epithelium, that there was a statistically significant difference between HPL expression in malignant and normal epithelium. And that 95% of um, normal epithelium showed um, HPL expression, while only 55.8% of the malignant epithelium showed positive HPL expression. In table two, we can see um, the comparison between HPL in malignant versus lactation epithelium. And we could see that in 100% of the lactation epithelium cells that we conducted the study on, HPL was uh, positive and HPL was expressed. Whereas again, the same number for malignant um, epithelium, only 55.8% of the malignant epithelium cases showed positive HPL expression, which again is a, a statistically significant difference between malignant and lactational. So what we conclude from these two tables so far is the fact that there is a statistically significant difference between HPL expression um, in uh, normal epithelium and lactational epithelium compared to malignant epithelium individually. Now, what we went on to do further was um, combine the normal epithelium and the lactation change epithelium group, which is non-malignant epithelium. And yet again, we uh, retained a statistically significant difference between the collective group of non-malignant epithelium and the malignant epithelium, with 97.9% uh, of the non-malignant epithelium cases showing HPL positivity. Uh, we've mentioned that for the results. Um, finally, we looked at um, the parameters, as we have uh, mentioned, and uh, notice how we said that we had 52 uh, malignant uh, cases that were included in the previous tables. As for this one, four of the 52 were not applicable in the auxiliary lymph node immunohistochemistry. And the reason why we see the ALN table and not the tables for ER, PR, um, tumor grade, or HER2 was because ALN status and HPL um, HPL expression 
was the only one out of the parameters that showed a statistically significant difference. So um, there was a positive correlation between HPL expression and ALM involvement. Um, so we proved that in 70.6% of the ALM positive cases, HPL was positive, whereas in only 28.6% uh, of the ALM positive cases was HPL negative. And so there was a statistically significant difference between HPL expression in ALM positive and ALM negative patients. However, there was no statistically significant difference for HPL positivity in malignant epithelium classified according to HER2, tumor grade, ER, or PR. And the p-values are um, shown on the screen respectively. They were all higher than 0 0.05. So uh, moving on to the discussion, um, HPL was a very intriguing topic because there was so much controversy surrounding the role of HPL in different diseases and the possible role of HPL in um, Positive, uh, possible role of HPL in breast cancer. However, there was very little recent evidence and there was no evidence whatsoever on lactation change epithelium. So um, after digging into the literature and exploring the uh, re research papers on the topic further, we realized that the to recent topics relating to HPL were mainly on its expression in two conditions. And these two conditions were placental site trophoblastic tumor, PSPTs, and breast carcinomas with uh, choriocarcinomatous features. So um, starting with the PSPTs, research has established that there is a strong expression of HPL in PSPTs. And a recent paper went on even further to show that HPL could be used as a diagnostic method of PSPT with about 60% specificity. And then moving on to breast carcinomas with uh, choriocarcinomatous features, um, obviously uh, breast carcinomas uh, with course, uh, Choriocarcinomatous feature are a rare form of breast neoplasms with a choriocarcinoma differentiation. So um, again, what the recent literature has focused on is that malignant cells, similar to chorionic trophoblastic cells, react with HPL and human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, immunohistochemically. So again, as we mentioned, the heavy, the recent literature has been heavily focused on these two conditions, and there was minor evidence relating to breast cancer, although there were many theories on breast cancer. So um, this was the first proposal we are presenting in the discussion is, HPL, does it play a role in lactation's protective mechanism against breast carcin carcinogenesis? Well, the results we have produced state that HPL was um, present in 100% of our lactation change epithelium. And so obviously this does not, um, concluding, but it is a step forward in terms of piling the evidence in order to reach um, a certain conclusion or try and develop the theories further. So that is the first theory we talked about. Does it play a role in lactation's um, protective mechanism against breast cancer? Secondly, other papers, on the other hand, discussed if HPL could be used as a tumor biomarker for breast carcinoma. So some studies have shown that immunoreactive active and serum HPL were actually identified in patients with breast carcinoma and that none were detected in benign cases. So this has led to the suggestion that HPL could potentially serve as a tumor biomarker for breast cancer. However, it is important to note that um, some of these aforementioned papers also in the contrary presented um, evidence that other patients with breast cancer did not show HPL in their, there, there was no HPL present in their serum. And so this, we believe, is consistent with the results we produced because we have shown that HPL was expressed in only 55.8% of malignant epithelial specimens. And there seems to be a divide in the paper that HPL is expressed in some uh, breast cancer patients, while it is not expressed in other breast cancer patients. And so um, this led to another intriguing proposal Proposal, which uh, I will come on to now. So the, uh, it is important to note that most of the papers we have mentioned so far, um, referencing data relating to HPL in breast cancer, have actually referenced the older evidence available. We have seen very minimal um, new evidence relating to the effect of HPL in breast cancer. However, one fairly recent uh, research paper actually uh, criticized the older methods and um, said that the older methods, they proved that the older methods 
were dependent on identifying CSH mRNA and incorrectly concluding that that means HPL is expressed, as that paper proved that the gene was not always translated. So um, their experiment, they conducted an experiment and they pinpointed that the older studies reporting HPL expression in breast cancer were actually using non-specific antibodies, which resulted in a misleading conclusion. So uh, um, before moving on to the mechanism they proposed, what they did was they used a, um, they, they suppressed the translation of CSH mRNA using SHRNA, and they realized using Western blotting that the HPL band was actually not abolished. The HPL band was still present. And they concluded that um, an HPL variant was being expressed that led to the misleading conclusion. And they went on to further explain, they, using a custom-made monoclonal antibody, that uh, HPL protein will only be expressed when the mRNA was highly expressed. So just because the mRNA was present in all the studies, does not mean that um, HPL was expressed in breast cancer patients. And that paper also went on to explain the discrepancy in terms of HPL expression in breast cancer patients using a very intriguing proposal. Now you notice that throughout the presentation, the word intriguing has been uh, deployed multiple times, and that is due to the controversial nature of HPL in breast cancer. So the mechanism they proposed was that breast cancer cells might or could potentially in, um, um, exhibit uh, an inhibitory mechanism on the translation of CSH mRNA into HPL protein when the gene is not highly expressed. So yet again, HPL is, um, was mentioned in older papers and referenced in newer papers that when HPL was expressed in breast cancer patients, it was associated with poorer prognosis. Now, several papers have highlighted that there was a greater incidence of lymph node metastasis when the HPL gene was um, amplified, and they have um, emphasized and underlined that HPL gene amplification is associated with poorer prognosis of breast malignancy. Um, additionally, one paper reported that 77% of the tumors with amplified HPL gene were also seen with lymph node metastasis. Therefore, they suggested that HPL could serve as a prognostic factor in association with aggressive breast malignancy. Um, yep, and one retrospective study showed that women with HPL negative cancers had a longer survival time. Again, uh, many controversial and contradicting theories being raised, but it is important to emphasize the word um, older evidence or older references. So that paper was published many, many years ago that showed the longer survival time for um, women with breast cancer that were HPL negative. However, it is important to look at what is available in the literature so we can build upon it. Now, uh, moving on to the prolactin receptor, um, the reason we mentioned prolactin receptor is because um, HPL being a uh, one of three known human lactogens, alongside uh, human growth hormone and human uh, prolactin. The, another interesting fact about HPL is it has a greater uh, amino acid sequence homology to um, human prolactin, yet, sorry, to human growth hormone, yet it binds with a greater affinity to the prolactin receptor. And yet again, we have found evidence in the literature that suggests that activity on the prolactin receptor could also be associated with uh, a poorer prognostic outcome of breast cancer. So as I've mentioned, there was um, increased membrane ruffling, cell motility, and cytoskeletal changes. They were all described as consequences of uh, um, uh, prolactin receptor activation in breast cancer cells. And all of these events were again, once again, correlated with breast cancer progression. Now, additionally, um, research has confirmed the possibility of heterodimerization of growth hormone receptors and uh, prolactin receptors in humans. And this mechanism was then used further to explain that there's an increased probability of HPL binding to these hybrid receptors and promoting tumor growth in breast cancer cells. So um, how does this compare to our results? Well, um, the point that we mentioned regarding that there was a statistically significant difference between HPL expression in ALM positive and negative patients, by no means are we saying that this 
supports or proves poor prognostic outcome when HPL is expressed. But what we are saying that is that it may support poor prognostic outcome. Obviously, we cannot conclude poor prognostic outcome from immunohistochemical results, but we do conclude later that um, more studies are required using wider clinical parameters to explore that point further. Now, in relation to the uh, relationship between HPL expression and the other parameters we mentioned, there were only two papers that reported um, HER2 oncogene amplification with the amplification of the CSH gene, which in turn translate into HPL protein. And this was inconsistent with the results we produced. As we said, there was no um, correlation or no statistical significance between eight, um, HER2 positive and HER2 negative patients with, uh, in, in terms of HPL expression. However, it is again um, important to note that these results, this result, um, and, and uh, as similar to all the other results relating to HPL expression in breast cancer, was only minorly mentioned in a paper focusing on other topics. And that is why we urge further papers to um, use that as the main focus of the paper and further elaborate on the results further. Um, however, in support of um, our clinical, para our parameter uh, correlation with HPL, one other paper showed that there was no significant correlation present between HPL expression and uh, progesterone or estrogen receptors, which is consistent with our findings. Now, the main study limitations we have had is that uh, malignant epithelium cases were restricted to breast carcinoma patients in Bahrain only. Therefore, uh, the findings may not be general, generalizable to other populations. And most importantly, or more importantly, the fact that the small number of sampling that we have included. We, uh, we concede that we only uh, included 20 lactation change epithelium cases. And so it is very hard to base any sort of conclusion on a very limited number of cases. However, as we have uh, emphasized, we still believe that this is a step forward in laying a new set of results that could be used to um, build on the evidence we have and prove the theories presented in the literature. As things currently stand, as, as we are aware, there are no other, um, there was no other research conducted on human lactation change epithelium cases. And we believe, although it is a small number of sampling, it is always a challenge to retrieve lactation change epithelium cases. And we believe that it is a huge step forward providing newer evidence in the literature. So in conclusion, um, HPL was underexpressed in malignant epithelium compared to normal and lactation epithelium. And so we urge further studies to expand the pool of evidence available, especially the lactation change epithelium cases when available because of um, how valuable they are and how much of a gap it is in the literature. We also uh, call for future studies to um, carry out more research on the potential protective mechanism exhibited by HPL in lactating cells against carcinogenesis, now that HPL does play a role in um, a woman's ability to lactate. Um, the intriguing proposal presented in the literature regarding the uh, inhibitory mechanism of breast cancer cells on the translation of CSH mRNA into HPL protein, this may explain the results that we have had that only some breast cancer cells exhibited HPL. Uh, however, this also requires further research. And finally, um, the most developed topic or theory out of um, the above is the poor prognostic outcome when HPL was expressed in uh, breast cancer cells. We said that our ALN positive status uh, in correlation with HPL expression may very minimally support what was presented in the literature regarding poor prognostic outcome. However, we strongly urge future researchers um, to develop such theory using wider clinical parameters. And um, we included the references at the end that we have used in the discussion because they um, formed a vital part of the discussion. More references are available in the full length of um, the article we hope to publish. And um, that is it for me. And thank you.